git status git branch we are in the main branch git pull i will create a new branch git checkout minus b mk today is september 30 23 okay so we are in new branch i will now start my yarn expo and you should also be starting your expo server and see it should look exactly how it looks mine yarn expo start Let's see now. Yeah, well, hold on one second. I'll be back in one. Okay, I'm back. Uh, let's uh, yeah, let's let me show you how it looks. Let me get it, grab it. Set up. Let me start the expo. So whatever we are doing, we are though we are doing React Native, everything we are also learning React again, which we did long back. So only new things will come in the React Native, but uh, most of the internal JavaScript thing is same as what we do in React. Okay, so everyone's screen should look like this one. Let me start the uh, server. I think server is not started. Yeah, server is stopped. Let me start the server. One second, I'm doing it now. Okay, I started the server. Now, let's check. Let me run the R again. No, app ID JavaScript key is same, whatever I gave you. No, let's, let's see. Okay, I'm not getting results. Let me check. One second, I'll check it, what's happening. It's, 
path server 136 dashboard. Let's double check how it looks. Okay, I, I'll I'll merge it. Let me open that also now. Okay, I will merge it, approve, merge, okay, merge your change in the main branch. Let's see what happens here. So we have nodes, total we have nine nodes. Okay, I created this nine node, right? And here I'm not able to, yeah, I'm getting all the nine nodes, right? So we are getting it, all the nodes. Now the server is started, you can get the data. Now, now, what happens when I put this? Sub, uh, I put some data and click submit. So data goes to the server, and data goes to the server. But here it is not reflected. Why? Because either we have to call this query again after submission. Okay, so we have to call the submission, or we have to write the live query to get the data. But what will happen if I add data and then call this view again? Though, though I will be seeing the new data, but let's say if if uh, if someone else try to put here, let's say we are making chat application, so someone else will put the data, and it should come to me immediately, right? So it should not, uh, I should not query it again to the server. That is the purpose of the live query. Let's say we are building the chat application. So once we are building the chat application, one person writes and another person should get the data immediately. It should not wait for the me to uh, ask the server to get the data. Okay, so that is the purpose of the live query. So we will be building the live query so the data here should get updated immediately rather than rather than we wait for the uh, wait for the server to query we should not query the server it should come automatically to us okay so that's what we are trying to do so before we do that okay before we do that we should uh, you know we should uh, you should be able to see this data is everybody up to this point, everybody can see the data in their application or someone has to query. So are you able to run the page and able to see the same thing what I am seeing? Uh, let me show you what is the JavaScript key and what is the what is the app ID. Check your. So I want everyone to be here because we are doing the live query, and if you don't do yourself, then you will not see the effect of the live query. So I want everyone to have the same screen. What I am seeing it. If you're not getting data as as Ram is not getting, we'll first debug why is not getting it. Okay, let's see what is the Okay, have you seen that JavaScript app ID is this one, JavaScript key? Have you put this one? Okay, so just share your screen. Let's see what's going on. Let me give you the permission one second. So you should be able to see what I'm seeing. Otherwise, you will not see the live query effect. And this live query is something 
very important. Okay, show me your app dot js. So go up little bit. Let me see. You're using parse server dot us one thirty six slash parse correct app ID and JavaScript key is also correct. And what you're getting in the parse, let me see. Run run it. Let me see what you're getting in the parse. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so just scan it. Okay, one second. Go down, go down, go down. Go down. So go down. Yeah. Go oh, scheme down. I want to see. Yeah, path server is this one. And uh, JavaScript is correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, looks like uh, it's good kind of thing. And you're getting this object result. See? Count 10. You're getting the results. I can see in the log, so what's the problem? Are you there? Yeah, so you're getting the results. Anybody else having problem in displaying as I'm displaying like this? Because once we do the live query, it should have come here immediately without us to refresh the page or without us to refresh the call. Okay, now I have to restart. Okay, let me restart this app. One second, let me restart. Anybody having problem, let me know now. Okay, so I'm getting this latest here. So now, now we'll integrate the live query. I hope. So uh, everyone is saying no reply from everyone. That means it's working for everyone. So now what we'll do, we'll integrate the live query in it. 
So this like query will be used in all our application. So make sure you understand this like query part. So I'll create a new file. Maybe I'll name it as. Okay, you cannot see because I sh I ask him to. I ask him to do it. Okay, let me rename this file. Example live query. So make sure you understand this file because this will be used in every project which we'll do. So here, this live query will be copied to all our projects. It will be same. Okay, it will not change. This file will remain same in all our application. So once we'll make it, we can reuse it again and again. So first, let me call this live query in our example file where I'm displaying. Okay, I'm displaying this uh, add button. Let me see where I can add. This is view data and uh, we're displaying this results. So in the ham, we home, we have the example and then we have the example view. So let's go to example view and here, because the data is here, we are displaying the data here. This is the data results, count and results. So here we have to in, in include the live query part because we have to update this results. As soon as the data will come from the server, we have to update this results. Okay, that's the reason we have to include it here. I will import that live query. Import example live query. And then I'll call this component anywhere in this page. Okay, let's put it uh, anywhere. I can put anywhere. Let's put it here. I can put at the bottom also anywhere I can put, but for the simplicity I'm putting here at the top. Okay, let's re re reload it. Okay, so this live query, I did some mistake with the live query. Take, this div doesn't work in the React Native. So let me call RNC, RNFES, okay. Okay, let's, let me show you. So I have, I created a React page, which is not right. So see, do you see example live query? We're able to see example live query. So just do this part and just include the live query and let me know when it's done. So we'll start writing the live query. So though this text will remove the text, now, but before the moving, I want to see whether this component is called or not. So just do this and let me know once it's done so we can move further. Okay, get it done. So I assume everyone is done. So let's start writing now the live query, okay? So make sure you pay attention because this is the one time I'll explain this and then then we will not use it, okay? So first thing is, you know, whenever you create a component, we should wrap that component with the memo. So that will that will help us in uh, that will help us in uh, you know memorizing the page so whenever the whenever we call this example live query here it will call again and again so if we have the memo it will only call once one time and it will not refresh unless the parameters are changed so here in this query in this example i have to pass the query what query i will be i'll be using and then I have to pass few functions. I have to pass few functions which I will be using to create, update, or delete the record. So let's say I have I have few functions called as set create, set update, 
and set delete. So what it means, this is the query which I will be using for the example live query. And once the new record is created on the database, once the new record is created in the database, we have to co uh, we have to use one function. What function we will be using? Set create. And once some record is updated, let's say I update this record, then what function I will be calling? Set update. And let's say I delete any row, then what function I will be calling? Set delete. So we have to call four things in this example live query. And for every page, this query will be different and this function will do different things. That is, for example, in our case, it will update this update this results part. But in another page, there will be another results variable. We will update here. So every page will be having different, this kind of pattern. So that's the reason we are calling this function. OK, so you will know in future what I mean to say. But remember, we have to call the four things. One is query. One is set create because this is a generic page which I will be calling for all my uh, components. That's the reason I'm putting these generic values for this page. Okay, so that I can call from any page. So one thing is I have to call the query. Second thing is I want to call the create method, update method, and delete method. Just add this part and then we'll move further. Let me give you in the chat. So when you are done with this, you have to just update in chat so that I know you're done. Any one of these you is done, then I will move. Okay, so this step is done, right? We added this one. Okay, now, now what we have to do? We have to create, so what is a query? Query is nothing but, query is nothing but, uh, let's say, this I'll go to this view data. So this is the query, okay? So whatever query we want, we will pass that query to this one. Okay, so let's let's understand. Okay, let's go here. Now whenever the query is passed and it gets changed, when it gets changed, I have to do something. I have to create a subscription to the server. So whenever the query is changed, I have to write some function. So how, what thing I will use it here so that I know the query is changed and I have to write something to query the server or to create the subscription or to change the subscription. So how can I, how will I start here? What should I write here? I want to do something on the change of the query. How will I know the query is changed? How will I know the query is changed? What should I write so that I know query is changed? So in React, something is changed. How, how we know, how we track that something is changed? What function we use? How we know that query is changed? A variable is changed, then what we put in React so that variable is changed, we know that variable change and we have to rewrite something on the server. Anyone knows or don't know? Use state is to create a new variable, not to know about the change in the query or change in the variable. You started to create a new variable. But if something is changed, use effect. We have to use the use effect. So always remember when something is changed, we have to use the use effect. So I'll write down react dot use effect. And here will be the arrow function. And then there will be array kind of rectangular array, rectangular brackets for the dependencies. So here I have to mention 
which variable is changed so I have to call this use effect again and again so let me write down here console.log I am in use effect and my query is this one whatever query I need pass since I am using in the use effect I am using the query I have to pass query as a dependency here so whenever the query is changed we will call this use effect again and I will be able to see the I am in the use effect so you will see it is saying two times one is use effect is undefined so generally it will come one time let me restart it again let me restart again and we'll see how much time it comes so whenever the query will be changed I will be inside the use effect okay so you see the one time I'm in the use effect undefined so it will call only one time because initially the query is undefined so first time it will call no matter what query is and next time whenever we change the query we will see the query here so let's pass the query here in this example view whenever we call this example this one here I will pass the query so how to build the query we'll build the query here so the thing is that in the query we don't need the descending order we don't need the skip we don't need the limit we don't need the without count because this is only needed for pagination but when we are getting from the live server it gives me the record one by one so this does not have any meaning okay so this does not have any meaning so either I can copy this one and create another function maybe I can create another function export constant get query is equal to I'll get another function where I will write only the query part so I will say return query and this query I will be using to pass in the example live query and since this is the query and since this is the query which I will be using here also so instead of writing the query here I will be calling the query from here so instead of writing query equal to new pass query I will call the get query okay so I call the get query here so this function will also use the same query tomorrow if I want to change the query I will change it here and it will use here also and it will use in my live query part also so what I get I I copied the query part into a new function and I will call this function in my example view so I'll call the get query also so before we go further I want you to change create a new query part and change this view data part so that we will separate out the query part from the view data because this query will be used at multiple places and tomorrow if I want to put some condition like like query dot equal to user equal to some user blah 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 then it will affect this part also and it will affect other things also where I'm using the query that's the reason I'm separating out the query I will give you this part in the chat just update this one and also also in the live query write down the use effect and then we'll go further and also call this get query in our example view okay once this is done let me know let's go further then
okay so let's go further now okay so th this will take time this is a big thing and very important for our all our projects so now we want the query so what I will do I will pass this great query so maybe I'll create a query here kind of thing let's use the Okay, let's let's create a state variable of the query because I don't want to call this gate function and again and again this will be loading my page again and again I will putting in the state variable of that query initially it will be null and I will write the use effect to update the query okay if I would call directly the query is equal to get query then every time this component will re-render it will call the get query again and again so that I don't want I want to do it only one time on the page load so whenever I will create a new use effect and here inside that I will say I will say set query is equal to get query okay so what I'm doing I'm setting it on the page load and I will see what is the query here coming so you will see the query is here like this one okay so this is a query now it will only set only one time that means this function is called only one time I don't want to call it again and again so whenever we have to create a variable I, we, have to, we have to make sure it should not call again and again if it call again and again there will be a lot of you know uh, things going on in one page and the page will become very slow so we have to create a use effect and put everything there so this will only be called one time when the page will load and that this query will be then passed to my example live query okay now we will see now I am seeing in the I am use effect where this use effect is coming here in this example live query. Now we are getting the query. So just uh, just do these three lines. This just put this variable. I'll give you in here in this chat only, and then or I can give you Telegram. It's much easier to copy and paste from Telegram, and then I will write down one use effect and then I will call this one just do this three step in one minute and then go for the
Okay, let's go further now. Okay, so what we did, we passed the query because this is the query will be used for the live server. And that's the reason we are putting the query here. Okay, we are passing the query here in this live example. Let's go it here again. So the first thing, we, we don't want to show any text kind of thing. Right now, if you see in the screen, we are able to see this example live query, but I don't want to show anything to the user that this live query is running. Okay, so what I will do here, what should I do here to hide that? I don't want to show this part, so what should I return now? Okay, we should return the null. Okay, so then it will be displaying nothing. So now if you see, okay, let it refresh. Okay, many times I cannot reload. Okay, so I have to restart it again. Let me start again. So now you will see, I don't see anything. And if I don't pass null, it will give some error. So if I just return it without null, then it will give some error kind of thing. So we have to say return null. Because this live query is the hidden thing on the page. User will not be able to see it, but it will do its work that it will query the server. Whenever the new thing is coming in the server, it will push the things into this component. Okay, so that's the reason. We don't have to show this. This is the something hidden from the user. Though it is on the page, but it is hidden from the user. Okay, now let's start writing it. Okay, so first thing which we have to do is we have to, I will be giving each line in the reactor, in the Telegram group. Once I write down one line, I'll give it there and immediately you do it. So first thing is we have to write, create a variable. We can create a, state variable also but state variable is not good for this purpose so we are creating the reference variable so i will say react dot use reference because state variable is updating every time when it is changed i don't want to update anything so this use reference is the best for this purpose so i created this variable subscription because we have to subscribe to the server to get the data from the server so I will also, once I will write here, I will give it in the Telegram so that you can immediately copy paste it on your page. Okay, so this subscription will hold everything what we will do it on this page. This is the main variable for this page and it will be used for anything happening on the server. Okay, so this is one thing, right? Now I will go inside my use effect and I will create one function you can call anything I call process. It is asynchronous function. Okay, async. Okay, so just create a function and call this function. So let me give you this part also. Okay, now, now what we will do in this function, we will write our whole logic will come here in this function. First, I want to see, make sure I'm here correctly. I'll do console.log, I am in process. See, I am able to see in the process, that means I'm inside this one. So let's write down, go further. 
So here I will create the subscription. So how to create subscription? I will use a variable, a simple sub equal to await query dot subscribe. subscribe. Now what it will do, it will subscribe to this query whichever we pass. So anything happening on the server on this query, it will come to this point. So we are subscribing to the query. Then what will be the one? So whatever subscription I will create, I can use this subscription and write the whole point. But what happens? Sometimes you know we are calling this page again and again and this subscription this subscription getting overwrite again and again so we are getting multiple requests from the server so what I will do I will see this is the array okay let me explain this thing in a in update in a minute okay so let me first uh, uh, let me first write down something and then I will explain this part that we need to we need to clean up this subscription part. Okay, so what we did, I create a subscription here. Let's say I, I don't do the cleanup. We'll go further without doing any cleanup kind of thing. So what I will do, I will be putting this subscription in the subscription array. Okay and I will be using this subscription array further in my page. So this is the array. How can I access this variable, this value of this array here? Can anyone tell me? What should I write so I will get this array value of this subscription? Can anyone tell me? What, how should I console this part? What should I write here? What should I write to get this value? Anyone knows how to get this use reference subscription variable? I want to put, if I put subscription, I will not get this one. What should I write down to get this value? Subscription dot current correct to get this value Always when you use the use reference and I want to know what is in this subscription We have to say subscription dot current. So everything whenever I create a use reference whatever is Saved in this variable. We have to use the current to see the value now see subscription is showing the array and if I do only subscription it think current and inside current we have the array. So to get this value we have to always refer to current. Okay, now what I will do, I will put this subscription in this current part in the array format. So I want to put this, I can put like this subscription dot current dot push. So this is a method of array. I can push the subs here like push. Is there any other way of the array to put, see the subscription is coming the first time, right? So, so here, so the subscription is coming here. So is, in addition to push, is there any other way to push? And any array method to push? I can also say unshift, right? Unshift is putting the subscription at the front of the array. So I can also say unshift. 
right is it right <coughs> i am getting the same result okay so we want to we will do we'll be doing the unshift kind of thing though we can do push also let me see what is the best for now yeah okay let's put the unshift here okay so the unshift means putting the this value at the front of the array at the front of the array and shift me push means it is putting the sub part at the end of the array so we are putting at the front of the array okay so why we are putting front of the array you can you can manipulate at the end also but uh, i feel it easy to manipulate at the front okay now whatever i will write i can i can call this subscription dot current because subscription dot current is this value right this value so i can use anything which we have to do i can use subscription dot current at zero level so this is the zero level we have to use zero level because in the array it is at the zero level first level so anything which i will write i will take the reference of the zero level because zero index because we are unshifting that means we are putting at the front and we will be using zero to access the first object in the array okay now let's write down the subscription part now what we have to do we have to write down different criteria like what are the criteria first criteria is on open so when the subscription is opened what should we do there is a arrow function after that so when the when the initially the subscription is created it it is called open and here i will do console dot log to see what's happening subscription is opened okay so let's see i don't want to see this part right now so it saying subscription is opened so before we go further i will give you this function in the telegram okay so one of the thing is we should do something when it is open we should not do anything i am just doing console.log because i don't care when it is open or closed but i will just console the part that it is opened now let's next, next will be the create when something is created on the database so i will call the create part and here i will get some object which is created so i will see what is created on the server so whenever i create something on the server this will be called okay so let's see what happens on the server i will create it here manually and you will see the change here coming so let's create a new row i will put some title maybe india and i will say user okay let's not put user now okay i'll just put in there now and click add as soon as i click add you will see i got i got this one message object created at this object id title india i because i created india here so whenever anything is created on the database we will see it here in this create function there is another function similar to create that is called enter so enter is similar to create and what is difference between create and enter i will explain you in short quickly i will explain you though we will not be able to see it now because we don't have that uh, that thing so let's say this is the database and you are querying that i want all the records for the user x so let's say there are 10 records for user x and whenever a new record is created for user x we will be going into this create function 
where we will be going in this create function this part create let's say let's say i i update this one record from the user x to user y that means now this record is not belonging to x it is belonging to y so it will not come in this query okay so when i remove something which query wants that means we are leaving the leaving the query but let's say again i change the user from y to x now this x this now belongs to x now this x is belonging to this query so it should come in the in the query part so whenever something is updated which was not previously in the query but now it is in the query that means it is entering into the query so it will go into the enter so this enter mode this enter mode which we see here it means that though the record was there but it was not in the query and when we update the record and now it is currently in the query state so it will go into the enter but when we create a new record which is not there in the database then it will be in the create part is that clear these two so something was in the query which was not previously in the query but it we updated so it will go into the enter but when something is created new it will go into the create okay i will show some example also in a minute let's understand that there is two different things in the query maybe it's not clear until you see it then there will be update part this is the create one this is the enter part and this is the update okay let's update it so whenever i update it will go into this part okay let's try some variable i will update some of the things right let's update this ddd maybe i'll say united states okay since this is updated you will see in the updated part see this update object is coming here so whenever we update it it will come in this subscription part that this record is updated similar to enter there is also a leave that means initially the query was supporting it now it is not supporting it we'll see some example in next les lesson right now i'm just putting leave here okay so we'll not be able to see this leave part today because we have to change the query and then we can see the leave part next will be the delete part okay so delete part let's say if i delete any record in the database it will come here in this part that this record is been deleted okay so that's uh, okay so let's do it now let's delete it and see how it goes so one of the record i'll delete it let's say top one i'll delete it and once i delete it you will see in the console okay now let's check in the console so you will see we are getting two object one is the leave object so we are able to see the leave object that something was there something was there in the query now it is not there in the query so we see in the leave object also we also see it in the delete one that something was uh something was there before and now it got deleted because both the conditions are met therefore you see two objects here coming here one is this one and one is this one okay so we have the one leave and delete and update enter create and open is that clear this part let me give you this whole function again any any questions on this part what we are trying to do this time i want everyone to answer it and try to do the things your own because i'll be just asking the question i want to answer from you from today also next time also i'll be asking you 
So is, is this clear, all these things? Let me add one more thing. Like we have the open, there is also a closed part where when the subscription is closed, we go in the close one. Subscription is closed. So whenever the subscription is closed, you will see it. But right now, there is no subscription closed. But whenever it happens, you will see it here. So is it is this part clear that what how we are getting it? So understand that understand that if you are building the chat application or you building the game in that someone will put in the database and you can update the every user who is in the game with this subscription part. So if we want to build the chat, this is the main functions which we have to use to build the chat application or anything multiplayer game, multi talk, multi chat, anything which is related to multi thing, we will be using this one. There is also one thing called as the socket IO, which is which is the custom JavaScript thing. There is a third party library called a socket input output. We will be also working on that in few days. We will be building something based on socket also. But this is the ready-made inbuilt functionality given by the parse server, so we are using it this one. But if sometimes the company don't want to use this one, then you can build your own this subscription using the socket input output, which we will see in for future classes. Right now, we'll only go with the parse server. Okay, now what will happen when something is created? I will be updating this results with that new object so that users see the result immediately. And when something is updated, I will go through all the results and I will match it and I will update it immediately. So if something is updated on the server also, user will see it without refreshing the page. And when something is deleted, then I will delete that record from this results array and user will see immediately that record is being deleted. He don't have to refresh the page. He don't have to come to the app up again, everything. So everything will be live immediately with the user. So that's what we have to do it. So we will be creating these functions on this, this page and whenever something will happen it will update this uh, variable okay so most part of the thing we'll be doing next time but i will be doing one part today in the example view i'll be creating three variables constant create set create this is this will be helpful in our create function Initially, it will be null. Then there will be update. And there will be set update. And third will be delete. And there will be set delete. And these three functions, what happened? Is it already created or what? Set update is already defined. It is one time, one time. What is the error is coming? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me see what is the problem. Okay, so delete may be the common word. We will rename it to del. And we will rename this to set delete, okay? So we will not use the delete part because delete may be the keyword reserved for the JavaScript. So we will be using del. Now what I will do, I will pass. We need to pass these three parameters, set del also here. So we'll be passing all this to that function. So in addition to query, I will pass the set create. So whenever the new record is created, I will use this create part. Whenever the record is updated, I will use this update part. And whenever delete is used, I will use this set delete part. So what I did, I created three state variables, which will make us, which will help me in creating, updating, and deleting the 
function. So let me use these three and I will also change this example query to use those three state variables. Is that clear? So next class, every, there will be class only on Saturdays, every Saturday, uh, US time and in India there will be Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. Once a week it will be there because I am also busy a uh, whole week. So I am keeping only one for now. Next, in future I will keep more classes whenever I will be free. Okay, so now, next time what we'll do, whenever the record is created here, I will update it here in this results using this variable. And whenever the record is updated, I will update this results using this variable. And whenever the record is deleted, I will delete the re record from the results using this variable. So this part we'll do next time. Any questions on this one? Okay, no questions.